Ditch Mr. Bubbles and bring your little sister, because this week is going to be bio-shocking! Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, now with 100% more Flash and 500% more audience pandering. Who says learning can't be exciting? This week we're talking about the philosophies of Ayn Rand. Just long enough to say that we're not talking about the philosophies of Ayn Rand, because you know what? Bioshock is a whole lot more than just an objectivist romp through a utopian society. It's an objectivist romp through an underwater utopian society, which, as we all know, increases its coolness by a factor of 23. But could we really build an underwater, self-sufficient city like the developers depict in Bioshock? This week we're looking at the science involved, from handling water pressure in undersea forests, to geothermal energy and real-life millionaires currently working to make Rapture a reality. So would you kindly inject yourself with that used syringe of slug stem cells, cause we're taking a trip under the sea. According to Bioshock's official wiki, Rapture is located underwater a few hundred miles west of Iceland's capital city of... Any geography buffs out there? Reykjavik. Very good! Gold star if you can spell it. That area of the Atlantic is actually some of the shallowest ocean water on Earth, only about 656 feet deep, or 200 meters if you're a viewer who actually understands the appeal of soccer. Uh, football. Compare that to Mariana's Trench, which has a depth the equivalent to cutting Mount Everest off at sea level, placing it on the ocean floor, and still having a mile of water on top. With water weighing in at 62.5 pounds per cubic foot, even in the shallows of the Atlantic Ocean, any architect of Andrew Ryan's would have to contend with an immense amount of pressure. But surprisingly, the solution to the problem exists right in your own kitchen cabinets. The Triton 36000 is a new submarine set to explore the depths of Mariana's Trench, making it only the fourth expedition in history to do so. That's right, there have been more missions to the moon than there have been to the bottom of the ocean. However, what makes this expedition different is that the sub is practically a glass sphere made out of Pyrex, the same stuff as in Mom's casserole dish. Unlike other materials, the Pyrex sphere will actually strengthen under the increasing water pressure. Why this super glass is necessary for the cup I use to measure the water going into my Easy Mac is beyond me. But here's the thing. The Pyrex name has been around since 1915, with its current formula being developed in the 1940s. According to the game, Rapture was finished in 1951, meaning that the city's network of rounded tubes and pipes could easily have been made from this pressure-resistant material. And the spherical bathysphere system, like the Triton Sub, takes full advantage of using geometry to displace water pressure. However, the rest of Bioshock's urban planning wouldn't hold up nearly as well. The stone buildings and statues would erode faster than Lindsay Lohan's dignity, and the sharp geometric patterns of the city's art deco design would do nothing to evenly distribute the immense amount of pressure. In short, it's possible, but it ain't too smart. Building the structures, though, is only the first issue. How about oxygen? I mean, an underwater city is cool and all, but without air to breathe, it would kinda suck. Well, the game offers a solution. One mission has our hero Jack roaming through the hills of Arcadia, Rapture's undersea garden, to revive the trees that provide part of the city's crucial oxygen supply. In real life, an indoor ecosystem isn't the challenge here. The real problem is getting sunlight through the water and to the plants. The euphotic zone is the name given to the uppermost layer of the ocean where 70% of the world's photosynthesis takes place. However, this only extends 100 meters down, which, if you've been paying attention, is only half the maximum possible depth of the ocean where Rapture is located. Now, you know that I'm not one to take the easy way out. I mean, I practically illustrate every fifth word of my scripts. But here, I think it's accurate to say that Arcadia is simply located in the top of one of Rapture's tallest buildings. Because think about it, 300 or so feet up by building standards isn't that high to begin with, especially for a city modeled after New York. Look, I had an explanation already with light bulbs being able to recreate sunlight's natural wavelength, but 
if you see here, this area of the game is lit entirely by what's streaming in through the glass ceiling, meaning that this part of Rapture must be in the euphotic zone. So that's growing the garden, but what about the oxygen itself? Well, the plants are a nice touch, but like a degree in classical languages, they're pretty useless. You see, oxygen is easily produced from the electrolysis of water, which for Rapture, <laughs> there's never a shortage of. Basically run an electrical current through the liquid and have it separate into hydrogen and oxygen. It's a process that's existed since 1800, and submarines have been doing it for years, so there's no doubt that Rapture could have easily incorporated it. No, the bigger issue is the removal of the waste carbon dioxide we breathe out, and sure, trees would make a little difference, but what's really necessary is a CO2 scrubber, a device which absorbs carbon dioxide out of the air so it can literally be thrown away like waste, a process that dates back to before 1878. It's an easy solution, making underwater living that much more enjoyable. So we have our buildings and we have our air supply. All we really need now is the power. The eighth level of Bioshock brings Jack to Hephaestus, the fiery furnace, a plant that uses the Earth's geothermal energy to produce the bulk of Rapture's electricity. And here is where the developers over at 2K show their brilliance. Because on land, utilizing the natural heat of Earth's molten interior poses multiple problems, including transporting it all the way to the surface, and the fact that it's very location-specific, meaning that you have to be around a convergence of two tectonic plates to harness the heat available in Earth's lower layers. But Rapture being on the seafloor eliminates the first problem altogether because you've already gotten rid of hundreds of feet of piping. As for the second, remember what I said a couple minutes ago about Rapture's location? Reykjavik! Iceland exists on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and on a geological hotspot. What this means is that the country is loaded with geysers and volcanoes. As a result, over 50% of Iceland's total energy consumption comes from geothermal sources. <laughs> and to wrap it all up in a nice little package, using geothermal energy in Iceland dates back to 1930, over 10 years before Rapture was even conceived, meaning that not only is it possible to build the city today, unbelievably, all the technology for an underwater city existed by the time Andrew Ryan started his plans in the 1940s. All told, it appears that Bioshock provides a decent lesson on underwater urban planning, plus the 40s setting is actually the year when the technology to make this possible all came together. So why hasn't this happened? Who says it hasn't? Have you researched the ocean floor around the Mid-Atlantic Ridge lately? I have. And my research didn't turn up anything. Still, the idea of oceanic living is catching on. Underwater restaurants, a secret underwater hotel planned off a private island in Fiji, a $1.5 billion underwater complex in Dubai, but most bio-shockingly of all, in 2008, a group of millionaires, including the founder of PayPal, started the Seasteading Institute, an organization dedicated to making independent floating ocean nations. Okay, so they're not underwater. Water, but stick with me here, because this is a biggie. They want these floating, independent nations to run on libertarian principles. Laissez-faire, hands-off, each man entitled to the sweat of his brow. In other words, Andrew Ryan's, and yes, Ayn Rand's philosophy. Okay, so we didn't get through the whole episode without mentioning her again, sorry. The first test of this is set to happen near the San Francisco Bay sometime coming soon, so keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, I recommend that everyone throw away their retro scuba gear and pour salt on any suspicious looking slugs. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Somewhere.